one of the things we like to do here at Be Free is provide uh, educational programs and activities for our visitors, mostly students. And one of the most misunderstood animals um, on the planet is snakes. They're generally feared or hated in almost every culture, except a few around the world. Um, so we like to expose our visitors to their fears and also to teach them as much about the natural, uh, our natural heritage as, as we possibly can. Um, so oftentimes when student groups are here, we do presentations on bats or insects or, in this case, reptiles and amphibians. What I have here in this bucket is probably the most feared uh, and respected snake in Belize. It's called the fertilance. Another name for it is yellow jaw. That's sort of a local common name. Um, Bothrop's asper is the scientific name. And it's found from Mexico down to about Panama. And then in South America, there's another very, very close relative that looks very, very similar that really carries the species down to the rest of South America. This particular snake, the fertilance, accounts for more deaths than all the other snakes in Central America have combined. Um, in Belize, uh, usually about three or four people die every year from fertilance bite, uh, though there are dozens and dozens of bites, um, maybe even upwards of 40 or 50. I haven't looked at the statistics recently, but some years ago it was something close to that. Virtually every single person you meet in Belize, either just about every person knows someone that has been bit, or has been bit themselves, usually the, the former. Um, and the reason why people get bit so commonly in, in Belize of these snakes is because Belize is such a rural country. People live very close to the land. Many people farm. Um, and there's still, you know, a lot of wildlife, a lot of forest left. And so um, when people are clearing their farms to plant their corn or their beans or their rice or their plantain or whatever, they're usually out working with a machete. Um, this is mostly in the rural areas, of course. And as they're cleaning, um, you can't always see everything around them. And, and, and fertile ants inhabit every single habitat type in Belize. They're found from the mountains down to the coast. Uh, in Pine Ridge, in, in savannas, in Broken Ridge, in deep jungle, every habitat type. So they, they are widespread. So when someone's out clearing their farm and they're chopping the grass with their machete, their hand sometimes is very close to the ground and that's where the snakes are. They're, they're terrestrial snakes. They're not, they don't live in trees. So, um, or they, someone may be walking in the forest or walking by their farm or wherever. And so most of the snake bites occur in the ankle area or on the hand or wrist or forearm. It's almost where all the bites occur. Um, fertile ants are not the most venomous snakes in the world by any means. Uh, compared to many other species of snakes, they're actually, uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not, it's not mild, but there are certainly much more venomous snakes out there. Nor are they very aggressive. Um, if you read some of the Grayler literature um, and certainly some books guidebooks or, or some other books about the fertile ants. Uh, many people believe that they're very aggressive, that they will chase you down, um, but that's not true. I've heard stories of people driving their trucks down the highway and running over a snake, a fertile ant, and the snake biting and punching the tire and getting a flat tire. I would, I guess it's possible, but I would find that pretty hard to believe. They're really not very aggressive um, unless they're disturbed just like any other animal, a dog, a cat, a bird. If it's stepped on or grabbed or feels threatened, it's going to do whatever it can to defend itself. Fur lances are no different. One of the misconceptions about venomous snakes is that um, their venom is, they evolved their venom to, uh, to um, defend themselves. But that's really not the case. They, they evolved venom uh, is, is really to catch prey. It's just modified saliva. Um, and just like our saliva, when we bite and chew something, uh, the saliva starts to break down the tissue. Um, it's got enzymes in it that, that help break down tissue. Well, a venomous snake is the same thing. It's just a lot more stronger. So when a venomous snake, like a fertile ant, bites its prey, for example, a, a rodent, it, um, it's coiled usually and it strikes out with its two front fangs that unfold, strikes the, the rodent or whatever the, the prey item is, and then immediately lets go, and that 
rodent or whatever it is hops off in the bush. After not very long, the venom takes effect. The animal becomes somewhat paralyzed. Um, well, the heart, it's, it's, the, it's the, the blood, the bloodstream mostly that's affected and then the animal will die. And then after a few minutes, the snake will slowly crawl over following the scent of the, where the rodent, let's say, went until it finds it and then it latches on and slowly ingests it and swallows it. So um, they certainly, though, use that venom as a defensive mechanism since they have it. Um, so, uh, though at the same time, because venom is very um, expensive to produce, in other words, it takes a lot of energy and resources for the snake to, to create the venom, um, it, there, some, sometimes if, an ant, if a snake, if a fertile ant feels threatened, it will bite the victim but not even inject any venom. It's called a dry bite. And in fact, most bites are dry bites. Um, or they'll inject a, ver inject a very small amount of venom uh, to conserve it for when they need it for catching prey. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll just take the snake out. It's about four feet long or so, maybe four and a half feet. Um, snakes are... Uh, such interesting creatures. They've evolved to live in the ocean, up on mountain tops. There's boreal snakes, there's terrestrial snakes, there's snakes that live mostly under the ground. They've evolved into almost every type of habitat. Um, and they range in size from the smallest snakes, about so big, to, you know, reticulated pythons that get 30 feet long. So there's quite a range. Fertile ants, maximum size is about 8 feet, uh, with a head about, I don't know, about the size like this. When they're born, though, they're very small, about as thin as a pencil and maybe six to eight inches long. They have a yellow sulfur tip on their tail when they're young. Um, there's a number of snakes that actually have a brightly colored tail tip, um, which they use to um, attract prey. It's called a caudal lure. Caudal meaning the tail. And what you'll see with these young fur lance and some other snakes is that they will sit there coiled waiting for their prey and they'll stick their tail out and they'll go like this for the tip of their tail. And they'll use it to attract mostly birds, um, thinking maybe it's a worm. Um, as they get larger, um, they become, they're pretty effective uh, predators and they don't usually use that caudal lure anymore. Actually, the sulfur tail tip slowly disappears into just more of a brown color. A number of snakes have that strategy. In any case, um, I'll take it out and we can look at it. Um, Ooh. Uh, don't try this at home unless you're an experienced snake handler because, of course, it's dangerous. This, when I'm using this, is called a snake hook, which is sort of just a modified aluminum lightweight pole with a hook at the end, which herpetologists use to handle snakes. So I'll take this guy out. You can see he's flicking his tongue, and he's ready to go. But I won't let him go anywhere. Um, yeah, he's about one, two, yeah, he's about four feet long. 